Hey guys, we're here with the Mazda CX-5 Turbo. I think it's time to take this thing for a drive. It's a quick tour. If you guys haven't seen the full video, go check that out, see a full tour and review of the CX-5 Turbo. I think it's a fantastic vehicle. Looks great too in the sole red crystal metallic. A little bit rainy today, a little wet out. Let's go hop inside and take this thing on a drive though, because I think this is the next part of why I love this vehicle so much. Awesome, let's hop inside. Awesome. So, this one has the 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine under the hood. Mazda's big turbo. A 256 horsepower and around 320 pound feet of torque on 93 premium. Makes around 227 ish on regular pump gas. So, it is nice that you do have that flexibility to run it on both types of fuel. Fortunately, I do kind of have to have the defoggers on because it is really humid out today. Um, how about the doors? We do can have sport mode and off-road mode your two main drive modes as well as normal um normal is perfect for the roads as it should be sport is a little bit more aggressive as we'll see in a second um i do kind of like it turbo sound is nice this is a big engine it has a really unique exhaust let me just turn this off for a second so you can hear that it's loud even inside and the pedals vibrate a lot i don't know if that's supposed to happen um, I've actually heard other people talk about this too, so um, I think it is supposed to happen, but Mazda really wants you to feel connected to this vehicle. No rev limiter, like I said, so you can really hear that exhaust note. Open the windows up a little bit for you guys. Yeah, you can hear it. It's a cool engine. It is super torquey. Um, I'll pop into drive in a second, but just to remember, we're going to sport mode now. There's no traction control button I can really find in here, and Mazda's tuned this engine to be sporty. Um, they want you to kind of have low-end torque, so the revs will always stay pretty low, and it does upshift pretty around 5,500 to 6,000 RPM, which is kind of annoying, even in manual mode sometimes. Um, so all that torque is packed down low for really punchy off-the-line stuff and does fall off really quickly, um, but that horsepower does carry you out a little bit. So let's take it on a drive. Pop it into drive right here. We're in a parking lot, so we're not going to go any crazy speeds right now, but let's just give you an example. The torque. Holy Jesus. The torque picks up so hard. Brakes are good. Now, if I'm gonna complain, the brake pedal, I don't think it's firm enough. Um, it's a little spongy and you kind of have to put your foot down a little bit more than you think you're gonna have to, to stop. That's one minor complaint on the CX-5. It could be just with this one I've received. This is a journalist car. Um, it's probably been abused. So that's just one thing I've noticed. Now, the steering in this vehicle is absolutely fantastic. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, but it's fantastic. I want to do a quick acceleration run for you guys right now before we hop into anything more serious. But the driving experience of the CX-5 is one of the reasons why I think it's one of the top selling and the best um, rated vehicle in this category of crossovers. So a quick little acceleration run right here. It is uphill, but it is our only chance to do it. Let's wait for this car to come by really quick. A little bit of throttle. And there is 60 right there. So, 60 is supposed to happen around six seconds, people get. I can't time that off the top of my head right now, but it feels quick. It is an SUV. It does have the same engine as the Mazda 3 and the CX-30 turbos, as well as the CX-50 turbo. And the smaller vehicles, of course, is gonna feel a little bit quicker as it is less weight and it is a smaller chassis. Um, but it is more than enough, I think, for this vehicle. You don't need much more in a, kind of like a daily family vehicle. And it is incredibly torquey off the line. I do love that point. I think that's what Mazda wanted. They wanted you to have that punch off the line, which is fantastic. Um, a note on this chassis, so we have fully independent suspension, multi-link out back, and um, I think regular independent suspension up front, which is nice. 
That engine just sounds fantastic too. And it, you can't really hear it right now. It's a little, as we're going to high, higher speeds, um, when you let off the throttle, you can hear a nice big turbo whoosh, um, which is really, really cool, I think. And you can also pop it into manual mode. You don't even have to pop it into manual mode here. This is full manual mode. Um, it, it still will auto upshift, unfortunately, but you can always access, access that with the paddle shifters, which is really nice. Um, you know, it's plenty of passing power. And I love the heads up display that Mazda gives you. You have your speed recognition up there, and as well as you have your kind of safety systems, as we'll get into in a second, as we merge onto the highway right here. Let's merge onto the highway. And we can see that power to get on is awesome. Now, as we are on the highway, I do want to show you guys the, um, cruise control systems that we have here. So on the right side of the steering wheel, you have your kind of setup for this. You can turn it on and now you can see it'll come up an indicator there and it's activated and then you can press set. Sport mode is turned off when you go into cruise control mode and you can adjust your increments right here. And if you hold it, it'll go up by increments of five, which is really nice. And your left button can control your following distance, which is fantastic as well. Um, now this is not my favorite system i'm not gonna lie and you can also see the heads up display i don't know if it's going to show up in the camera as well but it does increase in size a little bit when you're on cruise control mode because they want you to focus on the uh, road um i will complain a little bit about this this is not my favorite system i said this in the mazda 3 as well and that has a newer system a little bit newer um it's just not the best um subaru's eyesight system if you want something that's gonna be really really like close to like that hands-free experience even though it's not that's gonna be your i think one of the best ones Right above that is the Hyundai and Kia system. Those are fantastic. Um, this is just on the lower end of this. It does have lane keep assist, so it'll kind of like vibrate the steering wheel if you nudge out of the lane, but it's not gonna like really turn you too much. It's not gonna be steering you. Subaru does offer kind of the, this active steering assist where, like I said, if you took your hands off the wheel, you're not supposed to, but if you did, it will steer you around a bend. This won't do that. Um, so that's just one thing to keep in mind if you are um, looking for that in a vehicle. Otherwise, um, it's fine. I'm not the biggest fan of these systems personally, so that's that. But um, if you want something a little bit less intrusive, like I probably would, this is um, uh, this is a, this is what you're going to be wanting to go for. Like I said before, and you can just pop it back into smart, sport mode, and you get that power accessible at a much. Um, accessible rife range. Now, one thing that is a little bit annoying is the blind spot monitoring. Love blind spot monitoring as a feature. This one is hyperactive. I have never been in a vehicle that has such a hyperactive blind spot monitoring. There could be a car really far behind you that you can see in your mirror and it will still beep at you when you put your um, turn indicators on. Like, hey, hey, there's a car there. I'm like, yes, I can see it. Um, I think that's a good thing, but it is, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it's a little super hyperactive I will, if i will be a little honest it has gotten a little annoying sometimes um but nonetheless it is it is a safety feature and i do like how mazda's um blind spot system shows up both in your center display as well as in the heads up display as well which is really cool so you can kind of see where these vehicles are around you at all times um unfortunately this one doesn't have the 360 degree cameras that you can access all the time like in the three um i think that's in the 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 one above this turbo signature we're in sport mode so it's a little bit louder you can hear that a little bit and once you pop it into normal mode the revs drop the transmission cools down and it is a little bit quieter on the interior which is if you want that that's what you're going to be wanting to look for in that aspect well if you do need that passing power it is available trust me it does have a six-speed automatic gearbox like I said, and um, it's okay. I'm not going to lie. It is okay. Um, I would want some more gears. I honestly feel like for efficiency purposes, this doesn't do the best on fuel economy. Um, in the city, you're going to look around like 22 miles to the gallon highway. You're looking around like 27, 28. I, it's checked right now what we're doing right now. We are getting 20 miles to the gallon. So <laughs> that's the worst. Um, I have been driving a little bit aggressively, I won't lie, in sport mode all the time, but um, it's not the best. The regular base engine in the CX-5 will get better fuel economy, as, but you are sacrificing horsepower, unfortunately.
Otherwise, it is a super comfortable experience. Now, some have said that the suspension in the CX-5 is a little stiff for them. I wouldn't say it's super stiff. Um, it is stiffer than something you're gonna find in a Subaru Forester or even a RAV4. Um, but I think it, it works in the way that Mazda wanted it to. They spent a lot of time on the chassis. Show that passing car really quick. Yeah, this thing picks up really quick, which I think is fantastic. Um, but like I said, um, there's that hyperactive blind spot system. It is a quick vehicle. <laughs> wow. Um, brakes, like I said before, that brake pedal, I wish it was a little bit firmer. Not going to lie, I completely lost my train of thought right there. Yeah, so the suspension system, Mazda spent a lot of time and money on this to kind of tune it to be a pleasurable experience for you. Um, and I think you can feel that in this vehicle. It is handles fantastically. This steering is the best steering, not in the class, but I think it can, it kind of goes over some other classes into like a more premium level. Fantastically direct. I like a little bit of a heavier steering rack. This is a little bit of a heavier and quicker steering rack. Um, not everyone's gonna want that. They might want a super light rack. That's just something you're gonna find in something like a Super Forester or some competitors like a CRV. Um, that's kind of just like effortless and like spongy. This is not like that. This is tight. It feels great. Slow down because this is a fantastic bend over here to kind of test out the chassis a little bit. Like I said, you can pop it into manual mode. It does. It doesn't always like to go into first gear because it doesn't like to rev out this engine. A little bit of a slow upshift there. Turn in a strong and grip is incredible. This all wheel drive system is primarily front wheel drive most of the time. But um, it does like to send power to the rear frequently, way more than other all wheel drive systems I've noticed. Highway is super busy today, guys. Um, it does like to send a lot of power to the rear when needed. So it is constantly sending power to all over the place. Some vehicles are always, let's pop back into normal. Some vehicles are always front wheel drive and they'll send um, power to the rear um, only when needed um, to kind of save fuel. This one's a very good system, I think. Uh, Mazda's tuned this well. Now this vehicle also features Mazda's um, G vectoring control plus. So this system kind of works um, in coordination with the all-wheel drive system, with the steering, with throttle inputs, um, and even it can detect weather conditions and it will kind of help you through corners. Now, Mazda said you're not really supposed to feel it. It's supposed to be working passively back in the background to help you get a better control of the chassis and the vehicle when you're going around a turn or in just general cornering. And you do feel it. When we're going around that little um, on-ramp bend over there, you can kind of feel the vehicle pulling in a little bit more. And I think that's the G vectoring control, controlling the torque of the engine, because you do have a lot of torque to control there. It's 320 pound feet. So it's able to control the torque of the engine as well. I think it can activate some of the braking in sort of like a mild torque vectoring system. Um, it's fantastic. It does, it does really work. And all these little details Mazda spent to make sure you have a fantastic driving experience. So I love how they're putting the money um, kind of in that department. It does set, help the CX-5 set itself apart from its competitors. And it is a little wet out today too. We were going around that bend and it gripped fantastically. That may be a due in part to these tires, but no, this all-wheel drive system is fantastic. I would love to see this thing out in the snow. I've been with Subarus my whole life. So I've only been kind of exposed to those in the snow primarily, but I'd love to see how this all-wheel drive system handles in the snow. I've seen it in videos and I've seen it do it pretty well but um, I'd like to experience that firsthand. <clears throat> and like I said before, when you're not in a hurry or in a rush, just driving this vehicle around town is fantastic. You know, the engine noise might be a little bit louder than some people might like. It is very quiet in here for this class, I will say, but um, there, you can still hear a little bit of road noise. Might be due to the center of being open. Um, <laughs> there's a little bit of sound deadening in here, but I think the changes Mazda made for the 2022 model year or this little mild face that they did were good. They changed the seats. They changed a little bit of the suspension, the throttle tuning. They um, improved the gear shift, um, the gear box actually, how that responsiveness is. And of course they tuned their drive modes. Um, I think it is a very comprehensive package. and. Honestly, you just 
can't beat the looks for this thing. It's a fantastic vehicle. Sure, the fuel economy might not be the best in this segment. You know, if you want a hybrid, you're gonna have to go for a Toyota or a Hyundai, or if you want um, that rugged and all-terrain brand ethos, um, you can go for Subaru, even though you're gonna be sacrificing a lot of that fun for the CVT gearbox, oh, transmission. Um, so I, I think this is a perfect blend for everything and with that added dash of that fantastic driving experience that I, you can really not gonna be able to find in this segment. It, it's gotten to a point where I'm seeing people compare this thing to like an RDX, an Acura RDX, or some other vehicles in that area. And I'm like, wow, that's impressive. I need to drive one of these things. And now that I have driven one, it is pretty, pretty good. Sure, those vehicles are a little bit more premium in their chassis tuning, um, obviously, as you're paying, paying a higher price. But I think the CX-5, what it's trying to do is, or what it's aiming to do has been um, perfectly, I think, executed in this package. I am really excited to see um, what the CX-70 is gonna be. It's kind of gonna be a little bit of like a more premium version of, of this, which is already a, a high bar. Um, for the segment. I think that's going to step up a segment a little bit more too. So stay tuned for that coming soon. But for now, if you are looking for a vehicle in this class, CX-5 is fantastic. I know they're a little bit hard to get um, with the chip shortage and everything, but if you can't get your hands on one, please do. Let's just end this drive a little bit. All right here, I might go buy a pumpkin because it is Halloween and I'm lacking in that segment right now, guys. But Let's just wrap this up. Awesome. It's just, a, a, the steering in this vehicle is so satisfying. It, it kind of makes the entire driving experience that much better. But yeah, CX-5 Turbo from Mazda. I'm telling you guys right now, this thing, this thing is one to get. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for a lot more coming from all car news. And make sure to subscribe and like all our videos.